Hello viewers, a very good evening to all of you. And in today's video, I shall try to give you a little insight on uh, a play written by Bartol Brest. And the play title is The Caucasian Chalk Circle. Without any delay, let's read the PDF of this video and begin our discussion. The play The Caucasian Chalk Circle, it is an epic theater genre play written by a German theater practitioner, playwright, and poet Bertel Brest. He was born in 1898 and died in 1956. His prominent literary works include Life of Galileo, The Good Person of Sejuan, The Registrable Rise of Arturo Ui, etc. And this play was first premiered in 1948 in English language at Carleton College, Minnesota, US. It was originally written in German language. And it was written in 1944 in the US when he was on his visit to US. Besides, the play was translated to English by a British-born American playwright, Eric Bentley. And the play, this play has been immensely influenced by the 14th century Chinese play, The Chalk Circle by Li Qiangfu or Jing, Jing Diao. Okay, this is a Chinese name, so I might have not pronounced to the standard, up to the standard, so I'm sorry for that. So this play, The Caucasian Chalk Circle, it is written in epic theater genre. So epic theater genre, it is one of the genres of theater or playwriting in any literature. And uh, we will try to know more about it in our uh, discussion. Now we will know what is epic theater. Epic theater, it is a theoretical movement that started in the early to mid 20th century from the theories and practice of a number of theater practitioners who responded to the political climate of the time through the creation of new political dramas. The purpose of epic theater is not to encourage an audience to suspend their disbelief, rather it forced them to see their world as it is. So through the use of epic theater genre, the writer or the dramatist, they often try to portray the, the real thing of the society or the point and truth of our society that we have not been able to uh, see or explore for various reasons. And through this epic theater play genre, the dramatists, they have always tried to bring some kind of reality of life and some kind of teachings of our society. Okay. Then, now we will dive into the background and synopsis of the sort of the story or the play, the Caucasian Chalk Circle. First, I would like to uh, mention here that Caucasian, it is a uh, place name, it is a city name, and uh, Caucasian is also a geographical area, okay, that con consists of many countries like Armenia uh, or Azerbaijan, maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, you can check the thing. And uh, the setting of the play is in Georgia, and it also falls in uh, Caucasian ge geographical area, okay? And the play, uh, The Caucasian Circle, it was written in anti-realist style and it and uh, the writer has used the literary device, play within play. So here we, this is itself a play and when we will read this play, then we will get another play that has been de depicted in this play, okay? That's why it is called play within play. But the writer has used the literary device of story within story. The plot of the play set in the Soviet Union around the end of the uh, Second World War, uh, we all know Second World War was broken out in 1939 and it ended in 1945 when uh, Germany had uh, been defeated and Japan had surrendered. Okay? And through the play, the playwright has outlined a dispute between two communists. Com communist means uh, it is used for uh, communist countries like Soviet Union and in there they use a collective farming method. Okay, there uh, you have to do farming for the state or for the government. Okay, means whatever you will do the cultivation, that all cultivation seeds or grain or crops that will be taken by the government. Means you, you have to sell that thing. And that is called collective, collective farming. When all people collect, collectively do their farming and they sell the products to the uh, government or to the state or to the respective authority. And uh, that collective, collective far farming is also called as kolkhoz in Soviet Union. Okay, now, now uh, Soviet Union no longer exists. It was uh, dissolute. It was broken in 1991, and it has uh, scattered into different new countries. And the main country was Russia, and then Ukraine, like that. Okay, and there one community was the collective fruit. fruit uh, one community was the collective fruit farm gallons, and other was collective goat farmers. So these two. Uh, community who were fighting for that land among between them the one party was they they had done collective farming uh, of fruit garm gallons and and the other party uh, they had done the collective goat farming so they, they were fi fighting for that land that who will now rule or who will now manage or take this land okay their conflict was over the farmland and as that land had been left abandoned by the nazis owing to their defeat in the war we all know nazi means the hitler's party or Ger germany had been defeated in the second world war by the allied forces at that time uh, whatever the, the 
places they have captured that all thing they have left okay uh, after their means when they have left then that place was uh, ruling no one and when when that place was empty and nobody had taken that place then so these two farming community or uh, these two farming group they have been fighting over it to uh, for the rights of the land okay and they were fighting over the management and control on the state land therefore uh, to end their land dispute the local people they have uh, staged a parable parable it is a kind of play where a succinct didactic story in prose verse uh, there is uh, perform and through that through through the parable the uh, audience will get some lessons some principles from that story or from that play and that have been organized by one group and uh, and all folk tale to amicably resolve that issue through its inherent teaching and meaning therefore uh, the singer arkadi chisdi uh, i may not have pronounced correctly you must uh, verify it in the other sources arkadi chisai uh, he arrived with his band of musician to to perform that that play or that parable to uh, re resolve that land dispute after that he began the parable with the help of his band musician he often emphasized upon the characters and he had also enhanced the more dramatic scenes with vivid narrations and at the end of the play he had mentioned that the land should go to those who would use it most productively and then the fruit growers and not those who had pre previous ownership they had got the land okay means the fruit growers they have got the land because they they will do the cultivation and if they will do the cultivation then that fruit will be uh, for all okay but if you do that thing uh, only got rearing then that will not be beneficial for many people okay that's why that kind of uh, decision might have been taken by the uh, writer of that parable okay then uh, the caucasian chalk circle it tells two stories that come together at the end i have already told you that uh, the writer has employed a play within the play that literary device so we have to read the two stories here the first story deals with grusa and the second story is azata and these both stories began in a caucasian city ruled by a governor who served as a grand duke on the other hand the governor had just had a child his name was michael and his wife natela he was very jealous of his uh, her own child because this uh, means uh, her husband uh, was always busy with uh, that child and uh, the governor's brother his name was the fat prince he has staged an insurrection okay on easter sunday easter sunday then he killed the governor's wife too then he killed the governor's wife and then he flee and in her haste she leaves uh, behind her child after that the grand duke and many of the sol soldiers they they to flee as well meanwhile grusha and kitchen mate engaged with a soldier named simon soon thereafter during the coup coup means when uh, you have killed a government official then you have taken the charge so that is called coup during the coup she has michael handed to her she has even hidden the child from the fat prince and his soldiers and it's a uh, safe child's life then she takes michael with her and flees the city heading north after spending most of her money and risking her life for the child she reaches to her brother's house then her brother allowed her to live there uh, live there for some uh, time over the winter furthermore with the arrival of spring bruce's brother forces her to marry a dying man from across the mountain then they held a wedding but during the reception the guests learned that the war was over and the grand duke had raised an army and return the dying man just he realized that he could no longer be drafted into the war then eventually he miraculously recovered and threw all the guests out of the house on the other side grusa he was now stuck with a husband uh, so she was now stuck with a husband she did not want so she was forced to be become a good wife to him then with the passage of time one day uh, simon or simon returned and learned that she was married he was even more upset when he saw michael whom he saw uh, michael whom means whom he thought was grusa's child so michael uh, was away from her claiming that michael belonged to the governor's wife then Krusa followed them back to the city. Ap apart from that, the next story was told about Azda. The plot returned to the night of the Fat Prince insurrection. Insurrection. Azda found a fugitive and saved man's life. The uh, the man turned out to be the Grand Duke. He realized that uh, he could be termed as a traitor. So Azda walked into the uh, town and re revealed that he saved the Duke's life. But the soldier refused to believe him, and he was released. After that, the Fat Prince soon showed up with his nephew, whom he wanted to make the new judge. Nevertheless, he agreed to let the soldiers decide who the next judge should be. Then, after a mock trial, they uh, chose chose Azda. Then he judged four very strange cases, ruling in each case in favor of the poor person. Azda soon gained a reputation for supporting the poor person. Nevertheless, after two years as a judge, the Grand Duke returned. Uh, Azda then was again arrested as a tra traitor by the soldiers and was about to be killed by them. At that time, the Grand Duke remembered that Azda saved his life, and uh, he had reappointed him to be the judge, and it saved his. 
his life. Now, Azhar had taken over the case of Gru Grusa and the child. Then the governor's wife wanted Michael back because without Michael, she could not take over the former governor's estates. On the other hand, Grusa wanted to keep the child whom she had raised for the past two years. Even Simon went to the trial and promised Grusa that he would support her. Then at the end of the uh, play, after hearing all the arguments and learning about to what Grusa had done to take care of the child, Azdar ordered a chalk circle to be drawn. He placed the child in the middle and ordered the two women to pull, saying that whichever woman would pull that uh, child's circle would get him. Then the governor's wife pulled, whereas Grusa let go. Azdar, then Azdar ordered him to do it again and again, but Grusa let go. Then Azdar invited Michael to Grusa and ordered the governor's wife to leave, but uh, he was adamant, so he confiscated Michael's estates and made them into public gardens. In that way, his last act was to divorce Gru Grusa, thereby allowing her to marry Simon during the dancing that followed as that disappeared forever. So that's it. It is a little bit complicated story here. You will get two stories and you have, have to read both stories in a simultaneous way. So I, uh, I suggest you to read the whole text because if you, without reading the text, if you read this or if you watch this video, then you may face a difficulty in understanding or comprehending this video. And I have also not included many things from the play. I have just tried to give you a little insight, insight about the play. So thank you so much for watching the video.